Hello, my name is Freddie Scott, and today I get the chance to conclude our series called Heritage of Hope, and today we're going to be talking about Jesus. Jesus' birth, his, his miraculous birth, is the most important event in human history. And today we're just going to highlight a few things and connect the dots about the heritage of what that birth meant at that time, but also reinforce how important his birth means to us today. So if you look in Luke chapter 2, the Bible talks about how the angels came and they told the shepherds in the shepherd's fields about this birth of the Messiah that was born, that he was born in the city of David, and they would find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, uh, lying in a manger. Well, notice they did not say that you're going to find the baby at Peter's house or at Sarah's house or at Mary's house. They specifically said, you're going to find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. That information is all the shepherds needed to hear and to know to find out exactly where Jesus was. You see, in that area, there was only one place when a lamb was born and was going to be prepared for sacrifice. There was one place where they would take that lamb, wrap the lamb in swaddling clothes, and have it prepared for sacrifice. So the shepherds knew exactly where to go to find this baby. Well, just a few months ago, I had the chance to be able to go to Israel. And I had a tour guide that was actually a descendant of the shepherds. And so for generations, they have passed down the story of the birth of Christ and knew exactly where Jesus would be. Now also here's some other cool things about where this took place. If you remember, we talked about Ruth uh, and, and she ended up marrying a guy named Boaz. Well, if you go to Bethlehem, you'll end up seeing that all the land in that area is called the Ruth and Boaz fields. Now Ruth and Boaz ended up having children and one of their descendants is someone named David. And when David was found and anointed to be the future king of Israel, remember that he was a shepherd to the sheep. And he was actually shepherding sheep in those same land, on the same hills where the shepherds would be just a few thousand years later when Jesus is ultimately born. So the genealogy and the heritage from Ruth and David, and Solomon, all of that information, all of where they lived was in the exact same place. Goes on to say that they would find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and he would be lying in a manger. That this would bring peace and goodwill to all men. That Jesus would be the ultimately the lamb and sacrifice to atone for the sins of the whole world. The world has a major problem today, as it has since the very beginning. And the problem is a sin problem. And it doesn't matter how good we try to live, how good we think we are, how many good deeds you try to do. There is no good deed that can cover the stain of sin. But God loved us so much that he did not want to leave you or me stuck with the stain of sin. And he sent Jesus, not just because he loved us, but he sent us, sent Jesus to us as a sacrifice so we could be restored in relationship with him because through his perfect sacrifice, because his blood was perfect, he was spotless. God was able to accept that sacrifice. Jesus paid a debt that he didn't know because he loved us that much that he made sure that there would be no division, nothing separating you from God ever again. Because of that immaculate conception, because Jesus was born exactly the way the Bible says, we now have hope. And that hope can be passed on to our children and to our children's children, 
that death has lost its sting. And we now not only have the opportunity to have relationship with God, but we also have the opportunity to be able to live with God without shame, without guilt, without sin, without anything separating us and to the point where God says, you are now my child. You are now an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. He has made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ as long as we believe with our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. That sacrifice does not require works. If you think about on the crucifixion day when Jesus is dying, there is a man that was dying right alongside Jesus who believed that he was the Son of God. And Jesus says to him, today you will be with me in paradise. That robber had no time to get water baptized. That robber had no time to go back and make things right and ask for forgiveness. The robber had no way to do any good deeds. He simply believed that Jesus was the Lamb of God. And that was enough to have relationship. So I encourage you to know that this isn't just a Bible story. This is the truth of God's love to each and every one of us. And that truth will still set each and every one of us free if we accept it. Thank you for enjoying and enduring and, and spending time with us through this video series. And I pray God's richest blessings upon you and your family this holiday season. God bless you. Thank you.